As temperatures drop and award season heats up, you should take some time to check out the flicks that you may have overlooked in the fall. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies you missed this fall, 2016 edition. For this list, we're looking at movies that were released during autumn 2016 that achieved critical success, but were hampered in theaters by either a limited release or straight up bombing. This fulfill will destroy this world. Number 10, The Handmaiden. Hi, Mane. With his 10th feature film, South Korean auteur Park Chan-wook has proven he's not going to slow down anytime soon. Loosely adapted from the Welsh novel Fingersmith, The Handmaiden takes place in Japan-occupied Korea and focuses on a woman who's hired to be a handmaiden to a Japanese heiress. However, she turns out to be secretly involved in a plot to defraud her. <laughs> The film features many of Park's hallmarks, including dark humor, sex, and violence. The graphic nature of the movie might be off-putting for some viewers, but it's still one of the best foreign films of the year. Number 9. Denial. I say to you quite tastelessly that more women died on the back seat of Senator Edward Kennedy's car at Chappaquiddick than ever died in a gas chamber at Auschwitz. Fall is usually full of quality historical dramas, so it doesn't come as a surprise that some slip through the cracks. But this one, starring Rachel Weisz, Tom Wilkinson, and Timothy Spall, is well worth seeking out. The reason you don't engage with people you disagree with is because you can't. Weisz stars as historian Deborah Lipstadt who gets accused of libel and ends up entangled in a legal battle when she calls Holocaust denier David Irving, played by Spall. I am that David Irving. And I've got a thousand dollars to give anyone who can show me a document that proves the Holocaust. If this fascinating true story isn't enough for you, Academy Award winner Vice gives another great performance in a career full of them. I'm not attacking freedom of speech. I've been defending my right to stand up against someone who wants to pervert the truth. Number 8. Shin Godzilla <laughs> The last time Toho's signature monster graced the big screen in Japan was in 2004. Ten years later, we got a quality American reboot. But in 2016, Toho brought the King of the Monsters out of retirement in a way we've never seen before. Co-directed by Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi, the film is a terrifying and unsettling look at how the Japanese government would respond if a giant monster actually attacked Tokyo, and takes visual cues from recent events like the 2011 tsunami and Fukushima nuclear disaster. For a while it was uncertain if this kaiju film would ever make its way overseas, but thankfully, Funimation gave it a much-appreciated one-week theatrical engagement in October. <laughs> Number 7. The Beatles. Eight days a week. The touring years. Everybody, how do you do? Directed by Ron Howard, this documentary shows the most beloved band of all time at the height of their international stardom. And while it may have gotten a limited theatrical release, it was made available on Hulu just one day later. So really, you have no excuse if you haven't seen this one. Made in cooperation with Paul and Ringo, as well as Olivia Harrison and Yoko Ono, the doc features previously unseen footage of the Fab Four's manic touring years, starting from their days playing at Liverpool's Cavern Club and ending in San Francisco and their retirement from touring in 1966. The, news was sad, the Beatles was this unit. You know, we looked after each other, really. So it was like the strength of a union. Speaking of great music documentaries released this fall, you should also watch Jim Jarmusch's doc on The Stooges, 
Gimme Danger. I just started jumping up and down like baboons do before they're gonna fight. As soon as I started doing that. Baboon, Number six, L. J'ai quelque chose à vous dire. Uh, J'ai été agressé chez moi. It's been a decade since Dutch filmmaker Paul Verhoeven last released a full-length film, but this thriller shows he hasn't lost his touch. Ah! Ah! Adopted from the novel O oh by Philippe Gian, Elle stars Isabelle Huppert as a French woman who's the head of a video game company and has to deal with the aftermath of being raped in her home. Ça rend notre version démo quasiment injouable. Mais le fait est, Kurt qui la patronne, c'est moi a dark and powerful psychological thriller, Elle shows both its lead actress and director working at the top of their game. A rôdeur? I l'ai pris sur le vif. Il était accroupi dans les buissons en train d'observer votre maison. Je me suis approché, il a filé tout de suite. Despite rave reviews, the language barrier and the touchy subject matter probably kept this one from reaching a wider audience. Vous pensez peut-être même pas vous en tirer après ce que vous m'avez fait. Number five, Queen of Katwe. Can you do big things from such a small place? think about such things. Why not? You'd be disappointed. Disney's made inspiring movies based on many sports, but they haven't taken on competitive chess until now. Based on true events and directed by Mira Nair, the film is about a girl named Fiona living in the slum of Katwe in Uganda. What is your name? Fiona. Could you please show Fiona how to move the pieces? She comes across a missionary who teaches her how to play chess, and she uses her skill to escape her impoverished environment. Checkmate. 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 She won! In addition to its positive message, the film showcases fantastic performances from Academy Award winner Lupita Nyong'o and David Oyelowo as the missionary who takes Fiona in. Sometimes the place you are used to is not the place you belong. You belong where you believe you belong. Where is that for you? This one sort of got lost due to an initially limited release and a crowded market. But it's one worth watching nonetheless. Checkmate. This year's gold medalist, Fiona Mute. Number four, Ouija, Origin of Evil. Let's begin. We invite you into our circle. Yeah, we don't blame you guys for dismissing a prequel to a terribly received horror film based on a wooden board. But shockingly, Origin of Evil is actually a pretty solid movie. Spirit, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Who are you talking to? What? Taking place in 1960s Los Angeles, the film focuses on the family of Lena, the old lady from the first film, and their first encounter with the board game that would doom them forever. It's a surprisingly effective horror movie, but it fell somewhat short of expectations at the box office, perhaps due to the reputation of its predecessor. You're gonna hear them too, little girl. You'll hear them soon enough because she's coming to get you too. Number three, American Honey. It's a business opportunity. We go door to door, we sell magazines. We explore like America, we party. Come with us. For her first film set outside the UK, British director Andrea Arnold decided to go all out in filming a feature across the pond. Featuring a star-making performance by Sasha Lane and a resurgent Shia LaBeouf, this flick is an almost three-hour-long road trip movie about a girl who drops everything and joins a traveling magazine sales crew. Do you have any dreams? Wants. Compromise. Like future dreams? Ever asked me that. Her journey takes her into the heart of America on a quest of self-discovery, with a good amount of sex and drugs along the way. So you show me you can do it or I'll leave you on the side of the road. Clear? Widely considered to be Arnold's magnum opus, you shouldn't let a severely limited release keep you from seeing this future American classic. Scared? Bang. <laughs> Number two, loving. I'm gonna build you a house right here. Our house. Director Jeff Nichols immediately followed up Midnight Special, released in spring 2016, with an equally powerful story, which received a standing ovation when it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. I want to take Mildred up to DC to get married. Are you sure about that? Starring his frequent collaborators Joel Edgerton and Michael Shannon, as well as actress Ruth Nega, 
Nichols takes on the true story of Richard and Mildred Loving, whose interracial relationship resulted in the 1967 U.S. Supreme Court decision Loving v. Virginia, which made the practice legal across the United States. We may lose the small battles, but win the big war. Not only is the race-based topic still a relevant issue, the film also features award-worthy performances from its lead actors. I know that. I can take care of you. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. How about we just start with your name, okay? My name is Edward Joseph Snowden. I want you to know how everything hangs together. This is something. Number one. Moonlight. Why are you looking at me like that? For? What, man? Come on, you just drove down here? Yeah. One of the clear front runners for Best Picture, this coming of age drama has been receiving piles of acclaim for its themes, direction, and acting. The film follows a black boy named Chiron through three stages of his life childhood, adolescence, and adulthood as he deals with being black and gay in a war on drugs era Miami. What's wrong? I'm good. No. I'm saying good. You ain't it. It's an arrestingly beautiful and powerful film, bolstered by incredible performances from the three actors that play Chiron throughout his life, as well as Mahershala Ali as Juan, one of the adults he encounters. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you're gonna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. If you need more proof, Moonlight is currently the fourth best-reviewed film of all time on Metacritic, and critics have praised it for being a film everyone should see, no matter what race you are. I ain't seen you in like a decade. It's not what I expected. What did you expect? Do you agree with our list? What movies do you wish more people had seen this fall? This was a monstrous volcanic eruption, one of the largest in all of Earth history. For more movie top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Some little magic chemistry that happened between us seems to appeal to each generation as it comes up.